Hi there, everybody. It is uh, time to post and share our February paint and party go creativity box scene. That is a mouthful of information. Sorry about that. Uh, here are our awesome yellow roses, yellows and greens, and you can interpret that however you want to. For me, yellow is uh, a yellow rose means friendship. Uh, and that is what I was going for for my theme for the February box for since it's big Valentine's month and uh, well at my age, which we will leave out the exact number of that, uh, I, I like to give lots of love and attention to my friends over the years, new and ones I've had now since kindergarten. So, ta-da! So those are my scenes that... Uh, this is the scene we're gonna be working on. You should have one of these in your shipping box. So uh, just a few examples, different backgrounds. This one, I used the wax crayon, so you can see uh, there's a little bit of a whitish edge to it, and the blue builds up around it. So you can definitely play around with the wax crayon. I just thought that was kind of a fun, a fun little touch to it. Uh, and we also have, if I can find it, I uh, just did some little textures with the wax crayon around the back. I am gonna draw out one of my roses. I'm gonna do two scenes for you, but uh, I'll also post these as still photos up on, uh, probably on Instagram. So if you're not following Paint and Party Go on Instagram already, go ahead and give us a follow. Uh, my little sample book that's coming to you should show a nice amount of different examples of roses. Uh, I'm going to try and explain it in the booklet without using a million words, but uh, the main idea was to show you that even though we might all look at the same photo of a, of a yellow rose, we may get completely different interpretations, or we will get completely different interpretations for our final scene. So. Uh, I just don't want you to get hung up. You know, if I write friends and you want to write something totally different or you're using some paints that we had from uh, last month's box or two months ago and you you want to add some other colors, some reds or pinks, or you have your, your colored pencils from the unicorn box and you want to add some yellow colored pencil over watercolor is one of my absolute favorite things to do. So feel free to do that. I'm going to... I'm gonna leave one of these guys just kind of propped in the back here. Try not to splash them with water. Um, and then uh, for those of you who do follow again on Instagram, uh, we've been working on vision boards here for at the shop and my own, which pictures are up on the Instagram and on, on the Paint and Party Go Facebook page if you're following. Um, so I use the, the gray pen. Mine's a little different. I've got a Sharpie, but the gray pen that you have in your box. Um, so go ahead and tweak it out. Put some infinity symbols in, circles, dots, leaf shapes, go organic, geometric. You know, you can combine uh, triangles with gentle rolling circles, ovals, uh, you know, whatever, whatever strikes you. This is the, the great thing about these little kits that you're ordering is you have just enough uh, sorry, materials to kind of get a base project going and then you can add with whatever you already have or if you're out and about at the store and you want to add something else. I mean, ballpoint pen, black ball, ballpoint is, um, is a beautiful little outline or edge or little shadow area uh, for your roses or the details around with the, uh, with the different shapes. So don't feel like you have to do exactly what I did and you're you're working on a small surface so you can do one and if it's great tear it off or, or cut it off with your exacto carefully and set it aside do another one change the colors I mean just experiment there's no there's no rules to it don't worry about what all the other artists have done or that you've seen and you feel like you have to imitate them it's really whatever whatever you like the look of. Um, I am just using a canvas panel. Oop, lost my piece of tape. 
and I cut already two pieces similar to the size that you're gonna be working on, just so you can see two of them going at once. Uh, and I do have some of my painter's tape. Remember way back in the beginning when we started these um, with our first shipping box, I think, or second, I can't remember. Uh, I, I told you about taping off your uh, watercolor paper so that when it gets wet, it doesn't buckle. I mind it a little bit, but not, not too bad. If I wanted to flatten it, I could. Uh, so just take tape off. This also gives you a nice little frame around the outside. So again, you know, you look like you've, you've put your ruler down and really made something fancy in the long run. You're just, just using a little bit of blue painter's tape. It shouldn't tear your watercolor paper, hopefully afterward. Um, another thing you can do with these after you've done your rows and you're playing around with your watercolor, you can do uh, multimedia, tear up some paper, use your Mod Podge, glue it on there, give yourself a texture underneath, and then you can paint watercolor for that background, maybe acrylic flowers over the top. I mean, there's so many, so, so many possibilities. So this is just, just to give you a basic little rundown, a little warm up exercise. Uh, plus I, I do like to work small. So, uh, so I've got my first rose put on there and I'm gonna, uh, first I'm gonna take my watch off cause it's driving me crazy. Uh, I'm gonna use my little watercolor brush and my little, my little ooeys, if you can see my ooeys. If you haven't tried these yogurts yet, there you go, there's my little food plug. Uh, go for it. They are so yummy and well, who doesn't need an extra little dish to make pudding in? So I'm gonna go ahead and just use a little bit of my yellow and white. <clears throat> Excuse me, no white. I'm used to saying that at my shop all the time. Yellow and water, we're gonna just thin this down. And I am going to just start filling in my little petals. And I'll show you how I drew this guy in a second on, on the next one. Just, uh, you know, great thing about YouTube, you can fast forward and rewind and mute me and pause. And maybe you've seen somebody else do a fabulous watercolor demo. And so you're gonna use some of their techniques Sometimes it's wetting it all down first. With this, I just, I didn't wet down the paper. I'm just wetting and applying kind of like a, a paint by number. I just like to color in my little shapes. If you have a hair dryer nearby or you wanna pause me for a second when you get up to go get a cocoa or refill your glass of wine, you can uh, grab, your, grab your hair dryer too. Or if you're working on your little board, of course, it's easy to pick it up and move it. So that's really handy with this process. You can be doing this in a coffee shop or something. I always love to go down to Scenic Brew here and work on my paintings or whatever. I went to Applebee's the other night and worked on my birds uh, with colored pencil that I'm doing for, hopefully, for the art walk that goes on down here. So if you're in Helena, find me. If you are not, well, thanks for ordering and letting me bring all this right to you. I, it's so exciting for me to be able to come up with a, a scene or a, a theme each month and then put everything together and find little tidbits for you and fill it up and Excuse me. The joys of recording on a little tiny budget. We have no, uh, we have nothing. And we have a camera <laughs> and some paint supplies. So bear with one day, who knows? This is uh, the 2019 goal is to get the word out on these and just have them grow and boom and go to houses where maybe somebody's living just too far from the city to go and enjoy a paint and sip with their friends. But hey, they've got, they've got this little video 
and some supplies and me chattering away in the background. And one day maybe we'll just have an audience of people painting along with me too, who knows. I'm always, always trying new things. So, so you can see we've got a nice little, nice little bit of yellow in there. I'm getting my first coat down on this too because then while I'm drawing out the next one, my first guy is gonna dry. You don't have to worry about that as much. Um, when you're doing your one little notepad. Uh, I thought this would also be a good way for you to have two more examples going. I'll leave my other little guys right out here. You can, you can see them while we're, while we're painting. All right, so my little uh, sap green over here. Now you can Again, you're the artist, so you can go over an area of yellow that's already wet. I have a the dirtier water and then the, the rinse water, so I can go in a second time if I really need to give it a good rinse. Um, my friend Jen does that, and she's painting here, and brilliant! Why didn't I think of that? So let it let it go on to wet paper, let it go on to already um, wet paper with color in it. Go on to dry areas. Dab and thin it with a little more water. I'm not a, I'm not a traditional watercolorist, but then again, now that that comes out of my mouth, I think traditional artist, hmm. Maybe traditional if I was doing a traditional, if you were doing a fine art, art college. I did, I did illustration. I learned to paint, but I also learned to experiment and do my thing. So most of the things I know, some are from lessons, but most of it is just years of experimenting, trying, seeing which effect gives my painting the look that I want to reach that final moment. I say, okay, it's done. Usually I get to that. I might still come back in the next day and go, oh, no, I gotta still fix that corner, but for the most part, I can get to somewhere where I feel like it's complete. Okay, now I do jump around a bit. That spot had a nice big clump of water, so I had to, had to jump over there and put it to use. We've got some Amazon music going on the on the machine in the distance. I can't say her name because she'll pause if she hears me say her name. You know who I'm talking about. So she, uh, she's playing some Amazon piano. No, 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 guitar for me. We had piano on earlier. Little new age piano. Now we've got some acoustic guitar. Hopefully it doesn't get me in trouble with anyone. I get in trouble on Facebook all the time for music in the background of my videos when I'm recording the hedgehogs or the chinchilla. And I like to have music on in the background. So, uh, yeah, if you're, <clears throat> if you're very bored uh, or you're wanting to see our critters, there's photos and such of Wilbur, who's our, our baby of the baby hedgehogs. She is just about two months old, and then Daisy is two or three years old. I adopted her a couple months ago, and then the chinchilla is a couple years old, uh, and that's Timon, so. All right, so you can kind of see, I don't paint very quickly either. I do get a little carried away and methodical and I'm fidgety, in case you didn't notice that too. Now you can have green overlap yellow, you can have green overlap where the white paper is. Maybe you want the tip of that petal to just stay bright yellow. Uh, so another thing to think of before I switch to the other paper in a sec, uh, I'll leave the other details 
and come back to this one. Uh, I did have a photo pulled up of a yellow rose, two yellow roses, when I drew these out. So I did not, uh, I didn't just make this guy up. Uh, I do alter them, I do make them my own. It's my own style when they're actually finalized, but uh, I do like to look at a reference photo. And you'll probably hear me say that, unless I'm really, really just making up a total make-believe scene, maybe a little bit like I did for my unicorn one last month. Uh, but otherwise, if I'm looking at something real like this and I can pull up a photo of a yellow rose, I am gonna do it. We're very big on reference. Back in the, back in the olden days, when I used to, when I was in art college, we had to go find magazines or books and tear through them all until we find, found the exact animal or whatever we wanted to draw. And it probably wasn't in the right pose. Now you can look up just about everything and you can keep looking and Googling until the bird you want is looking in the right direction and the foot is in the place that you want the foot to be and such. So, uh, yeah, if you're the internet era, you are very lucky because we didn't have it that easy. We used to make files and files and files of magazine clippings and such. So, and hey, if you're still, th if you're still listening and haven't muted me, thanks for that. Apologize for the cough in the background and everything else. Now, of course, you could, you can even take a paper towel at this point, do some dabbing, whatever you want to experiment with, or you can do it on another piece of paper. You know, if you've, if you're like, oh, I kind of like the way this is going. I'm not sure what this effect will do. Just try it out on something else. It's not going to be wrong, but it's, if it's going to make it do what you didn't want, then test it out. You can always test it somewhere else. I have some extra, you may have some extra watercolor paper still floating around if you, haha, <laughs> floating, get it? Watercolor, float, yeah. Oh, that was, that's my normal joke right there, when you float your colors. Anyway. If you have some watercolor left from back in our September boxes, then you can definitely use that for, for a little trial and error time. All right, so I've got some nice greens and yellows. I could still add some more yellow if I really wanna pop that in a few minutes, but we'll just, we'll be good and patient, let that dry for a sec. Hopefully this thing will let me keep chattering and painting. So I'm going to just uh, start in the center. The center, I think, is the hardest bit. It usually ends up being just a little bit of a spirally thing in mine. Uh, you can always mess around as you're developing your style for roses or flowers or things that curl into themselves like this. Uh, and you're going to maybe use some, some Payne's Gray to add some shadows. Um, you know, you'll get in the habit of darkening down in the center there. And then as it lightens and the parts that are rolling outward, you know, leave some whites on there, that roll of the petals. Um, if you're not sure and you need, and you need to just look some more, just put the pencil back down, pause me, run to the grocery store, Take your phone with you, shine a light on one side of it and just look at where the light falls. You gotta stop and just look at it all. No drawing, no painting. If you're not looking first, then you're gonna miss, you're gonna miss something. Then you still can stylize it like crazy, which is what I do. That's why it works for me, but yep, you gotta, if it's, 
If it's summer and you're somewhere warm and there's rose bushes nearby, go for it. Just you can snap a photo if someone says, what are you doing? Maybe don't go into their kitchen to do it. But if you happen to snap a photo out in the garden, you can say, hey, thanks for growing beautiful flowers. I'm gonna try and paint these. But yeah, don't go in the, don't go in the back garden. Don't go where there are vicious dogs like my house, you know. Air on the side of caution. But all joking aside, yeah, do, do definitely look, 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 look. Okay, and my petals get a little bit bigger as I get to the outside. You know, maybe there's one that's rolling. If I was gonna put the whole, the whole stem underneath and the bud, um, or another bud next to it. You know, I could I could do that. You can get really extensive. But for now, for now I'm just looking for my balance. My design. At some point it looks like it's got enough details where it's being held into that that frame nicely. Uh as for the details on my other flowers that I did show you when we started the finished ones, like I said, use that, use that gray um, pen to outline around it, around your details. You could do even a little bit of black if you want it to be a little bit, have a little more kick to it, a little more meat. Um, I'll go back on watercolor again. Or maybe we'll do the outside of this one. So again, you can see couple of curves. I'm going to add one more down here and then I'm going to call this good. I'll add a quick, quick couple of leaves. And design wise, it is just practicing folks. I can't tell you, I can't tell you what I've learned over, <clears throat> again, all these years for how to get my scene to feel like it's balanced to me. You know, we could go through all sorts of terms and, you know, it needs to have this and that. It's really, it's what what looks and feels right to me. And then if you're, uh, if you're painting for gifts, folks will love it because it's heartfelt and homemade. If you're selling it, then you just might have a critic or a, or a, a customer that, you know, tells you a certain way they want things done. Now, sometimes that's possible and sometimes that is not. If they want me to draw a dog a certain way, I tell them every time, it's gonna be my style. So if you want it to be a real realistic doggy, it's probably not going to be. Because my hand does not do that, especially not in paint. So, got my second flower drawn out. Let's just take a peek at those. They're looking really nice. Okay, and let's just mess around with our background for a second. And then you can combine them. You can jump back and forth. So I'm gonna do, remember, anywhere the water goes, that's where the paint's gonna go too. So I'm gonna, I'm kind of sitting down into it a little bit so I can see where the water is. I don't want a huge puddle. I don't wanna make it buckle on purpose, but. <clears throat> but I do want to have a little fun and I really do think it's fun. And so while that's meandering, anytime I add water, it moves again. You can see it when I'm, I'm pulling this water to the right and the paint is like, oh, okay, we're going this way. You could do the whole thing, do a whole one in blues and whites, no yellow. You can definitely have a, have a little bit of fun with the blue paint and it's, it's such a great color that it could definitely do a whole scene on its own without anything else. Uh, these shades all together kind of make me think of a bit of a tie-dye effect too. I think that's how I ended up with some of the patterns on my other ones. 
A little bit of yellows and greens. All right, so I'm gonna pull a little bit more of my water. And hopefully, I don't know if I already said thanks to you for watching and thanks for subscribing to, uh, to the shipping boxes, but if you're subscribing on here as well to watch all this fun, thank you for that. Leave me a comment. I will not, well, I'm good with constructive criticism. And yes, I know the quality of the videos are not fabulous. It's not my forte and I have not found anyone who dares to wanna be here and record this. So this is what you get. So when you combine these, hair dryer, background, ta-da, you get one of those. Have fun with it. Please post pictures if you, if you paint something. Look through the booklet of all the different examples that I've, I'm gonna send you uh, for this month's friendship box. But yeah, share them. If the kids paint with you, share them. Don't paint on their pictures for them ever. There's no way they're ever gonna learn to do it if you're doing any part of it for them. Not when it comes to this stuff. If you wanna help paper mache an enormous creature because it's a school assignment and they just told you about it 10 minutes ago and it's due tomorrow. Okay, I get it. There's still a lecture due, but I get it. But when it comes to relaxing and painting, just let them play. No harm, no foul. So you can see the, the blue is kind of trickled and moved. I've got this awesome line where it's starting to dry. Let it let it dry in some weird fashion. That might be the part that someone says, wow, that is just my favorite part of your painting. You can do little drops of water. I wouldn't soak the paper. But let it let it do a little meandering and wandering all on its own. Don't forget that wax crayon. If you've if you haven't gotten it nearby, you can still add to the to the middle here, to the outside there, because they're still dry. I hope I don't run out of my time. You know that that uh, it only gives me like a half hour. So I hope this will be a nice little warm-up for you. This one's really fun, as you can tell. I didn't exactly uh, get sick of painting roses, so I could go on and on. I hope you enjoy the ones that I sent you, and they give you a little, a little feel for the actual technique, and you can look at it and hold it and make, try to make sense of it, add your own touches. Share with a friend. Let them know what you're what you're doing. You don't even have to share your artwork. You can share my kit. Say, why don't you have this coming to you yet? Then you can do a play date over the phone with your friend that's on one end of the country and you're on the other. Just make sure you coordinate the times with time changes and things. We're mountain time over here, so and if you're if somehow you found me in some other place and you can't get my boxes because I can't ship them internationally yet, well, hey, share anyway. All one big happy place. I love to see what other people are creating. It inspires me to make something new. So again, dabble, play, experiment. Stop beating yourself up about it needing to look like mine or anybody else's on online. Be unique, make it your own. Mine aren't anything any more fabulous than what you're gonna create. It's just experience and practice is the only thing I've got in years and years and years of life. Years, did I mention years? Yeah. Anyway, friends, in case I lose you, have a great night, enjoy creating, and uh, 
thanks for following us here at Paint and Party Go. Coming to you live from Helena, Montana. Have a great night. Talk to you soon. Bye.